Hey you guys, it's David Perez with Born Wild. Today we have something amazing for you. What started off just to be about crocodiles um, ended up being a bit about everything. We met Chris Dieter. Now let me tell you about Chris Dieter. Chris Dieter owns Crocodile Encounters. It's 30 minutes out of Houston, Texas in Angleton. And I also have this nifty shirt from Crocodile Encounters. So thank you, Chris. And I have to say everything was in natural habitat. This is a must go to place if you're ever visiting here in Houston. I had the blast, the best time of my life, except my allergies acted up. Spring really takes uh, a beat down on me. So uh, before we get started, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell, and we'll talk later. Today on Born Wild, we're at Crocodile Encounters, and you are not going to believe what we've encountered. Enjoy. Crocodile Encounters, a 25-acre property owned by Chris Dieter, located in Angleton, Texas, 45 minutes out of Houston, Texas. Besides alligators and crocodiles, you can get a close look of kangaroos, lemurs, tortoises, snakes, pigs, and even goats. Being the home of the largest alligator and crocodile in the state of Texas. This facility is phenomenal. You can even hold a hatchling croc or alligator. We set out to meet this famous Chris Dieter, who was a former science teacher turned crocodilian conservationist. Due to my insane spring allergies on this day of filming, I got one of my crew member Brian to give the interview and what a great job he did. So enjoy you guys and I think everything's going to speak for itself. Hi guys, I'm Brian with Born Wild, and I'm here at Crocodile Encounter, and this is uh, the lovely owner, Chris, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about his uh, facility and just educate us on both crocs and alligators. So Chris, what can you tell us about your facility? Uh, well, first thing I tell you, we're, we're the largest crocodile facility in the United States, and uh, that's crocodile facility, not alligator facility. There are places that have more alligators than we do, but uh, we have more crocodiles than everybody. It's a forte, so. Please tell us. Standard question we get a lot, but the uh, the main thing you really want to when you're looking at an alligator, it, the jaw structure is a U shape. Uh, crocodile is going to be a V shaped animal like that. So that, that's the number one thing. Also, alligators tend to come from uh, temperate climates, whereas crocodile come from more tro uh, tropical climates. 
And how long has, has your facility been around? Because it's a beautiful facility, and I can see that it's growing as we saw, uh, you know, when you were showing us around, we said it's growing. Sure. But uh, how long has it been around? I, mean, I believe this is our 19th year of being here, but it originally wasn't meant to be what it is now. It was a private research facility and, and our private group of animals, and it just kind of grows every year as we, um, you know, we open more to the public and we expand it out and bring in more attraction for people to see. The primary point of the whole place, though, is animal care and, and the, the keeping of some really, really rare animals. So, yeah, we, we, we got to see that. And now, uh, uh, as far as working with these creatures, uh, how how is the day to day? Is it is it difficult? Is it? Uh, I wouldn't use the word difficult. I, it's got its challenges depending on what time of year you're in. Um, a lot of the time, we try to set everything so we're on autopilot as much as possible. We try to make it to where. It's actually very easy to take care of the animals, whether it's just flipping switches for water or pulling plugs for drains. Make, we try to make everything as automatic as possible, so you want to make it as easy on yourself as you can. So Now, how, around how many, give me a rough estimate. I, we saw so many <laughs> animals, but give me a rough estimate of how many animals, as far as gators and crocodiles go. That That's a great have. question. It's probably 300 plus. The majority of them are going to be, you know, crocodiles. Um, there's probably about 50 alligators that live here, various sizes, and there's probably 250 plus crocodiles. So. And uh, how long have you been in the business, as far as not besides your facility, but as far as just handling these? I don't really consider myself in the. I mean, I'm in the animal business, but I, I really I'm an educator. I mean, I was a teacher for a long time, for 19 years, and so we did this kind of. Originally, the park was not meant to be, like I said, what it is. So it was kind of a, just an educational thing we were doing for students and such. And so I've been in with the crocodiles for three decades, you know, so it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a long time. Now, we also got to experience some stuff that wasn't crocodiles uh, uh, sure. or gators. We got to see, uh, you showed us the kangaroos. and. Uh, yeah, we have a red kangaroo breeding program. Then we have uh, elan and ant we have different antelope species. We have lemurs. We have, we have a lot of turtles and tortoise species out here. You know, there's, there, a lot of people come here. They love to see the alligators and the crocodiles. But I mean, there's, we have people specifically come just for the turtles and the tortoises. Yeah, you do have some beautiful tortoises. And uh, as far as the, the the work that you do here, um, do you uh, we you two you were telling us that some of them have been uh, rescued. Yeah, the American alligator. There's a few crocodiles like that too, but you know we don't really like to, to play up the rescue angle of what we do because it's not our primary mission. Um, but we do do a lot of it, you know, just because whenever an alligator that's native is in a bad spot, we we get called and then the state usually asks us like that. But we don't we don't really go out of our way to because we get a lot of calls to rescue alligators. And they have a whole different, in Texas, there's a whole different group of people to do that kind of thing. So it's not our primary focus though. Uh, and uh, you were showing us some very beautiful and rare species. Uh, you were telling us how you were doing some work for uh, some... Uh, yeah, we have partnerships on several things. And uh, while well, the Cuban crocodiles are with the Smithsonian, Oregon, with Smithsonian Institution, uh, the Chinese alligators are with the Bronx Zoo, the Orinoco crocodiles with the Dallas World Aquarium. So each species that we work with, we have a kind of like a partner institution that, that we also work with as well. We also have uh, in Belize, the partners down there with the Crocodile Research Coalition to where we own property in Belize and they're building an educational facility there as well. So, so yeah, we kind of spread out a lot of different ways because our facility is large and because we have so much space and our climate here is typically pretty good. It allows us the opportunity to keep these animals outdoors in a natural way that where other facilities may not be able to do so. So it's a, it's a really great way to, to partner up with some of these people. So. Now, a lot of people perceive these, you know, these, let's call them present day dinosaurs. Hmm. See, they consider them to be one of the, the scariest, one of the meanest, one of the, a ba basically a living weapon of sorts. Yeah. But, uh, you showed us the side of them, the beauty of them, the the just basically, yeah, the beauty of them and how how you could be left at awe just by looking at how oh for sure majestic that majestic these creatures yeah, are. Yeah, that that's what they are is an, an awe-inspiring majestic animal, and a lot of people don't realize how intelligent the animal actually is. You know, we had a conversation earlier; they're they're actually closely related to birds, and um, so they they act more behaviorally like a bird than they do other reptiles. And uh, because of that, there, there's just a lot of social component to them. There's a parental care, the things you get to see day to day that, you, that a lot of people don't recognize. But when you're with them day to day, they're not, 
you respect them, but you're not really terrified of them. It's almost like a guy who keeps, uh, I don't know, pick your animal, cow, horse, whatever. You know, you respect them, you give them their distance like that, but yeah, you're not you're not scared of them, you know, yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. You showed us this wonderful facility, and not only, like he mentioned, it's the largest crocodile. Crocodile it's group the largest in the United States, yeah. And it's just getting bigger. Yeah, we grow every year and there's a lot of animals in the buildings that haven't even gone outside yet. So within the next two to three years, you know, there's even going to be more crocodiles outside. And, you know, it's just going to be a larger and larger experience for people to come out and see. So, so if you're ever in, uh, in, in Texas, well, in the part of Houston, the Houston part of Texas, uh, the place is not far off. Not no, from downtown Houston, our house is about 25 minutes, you not know, catching so, traffic, right? Yeah, so just give them a call. If you need any more information on the facility, maybe you want to do some field trips, maybe you want to do some educational purposes. They do a beautiful tour. They have a beautiful facility. They show a lot of amazing stuff. And it's not really as enclosed as you think it would be. It's quite open. Uh, in a sense that it's more of them being in their natural habitat and something that you like to make a point Yeah, we always make a point to like, you're going to them, they're not coming to you, you know, and so on a, and any given day, you know, you're going to see who knows what's going to show up. It's like, see, it's almost like seeing them in the wild. You're going to see them because you're the, they're there, but it's going to be a little bit different than, you know, going to like, say, Houston Zoo or something like that. In other words, you're the animal in the cage <laughs> and they're looking at you. Well, That's about you, right. You bet. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah. It Pleasure was nice mine. meeting you. Thank you, you for showing us around. And uh, stick around for a while. We're going to show you some other cool stuff before we go. So I actually have a true story myself and when I was 24 years old some friends and I were going to go drinking so we went to my friend's house drinking and then later on we wanted to swim and this is in Florida so we were young and stupid so the place we wanted to go at night time absolutely ridiculous uh, was closed so we went to our friends being that they spoke up and said that there was a private lake on their property. So we drove through the woods a couple acres into the middle of nowhere and there were uh, not a soul to be seen. It was pitch black. And so right before my friends were getting ready to get into this lake and I just had this bad feeling. I had this horrible bad feeling and I told my friends, hey, let's, um, let's look for a flashlight and they were like, oh man, don't worry about it. Uh, this lake, there's no one coming. 
I went to look for a flashlight, just please don't go anywhere. And they were ready to jump right on in the water. Uh, however, I got a flashlight, I ran back to the lake, which wasn't very far, just feet away. And I was shining on the water. And when I did, it was just tons of red eyes. We were about to become a midnight snack. And I will never, ever, ever, ever forget that life. And that was, like I said, when I was 24. Uh, thank God. Um, <laughs> just never again. Never. Absolutely not. I hope you guys enjoyed our show today. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell. Remember that always, please. And I will see you back on next Wednesday. Stay tuned for our some of our crazy bloopers. Enjoy, you guys, and have a blessed day. Thank you. Today, you guys, we're at Crocodile Encounters. We're going to see alligators, crocodiles, tortoises, and a good load of stuff. So Go. Today, on Crocodile Encounters. Damn, fly. <laughs> Today, you guys, on Born Wild, today we are at Crocodile Encounters. So, Brian, Candace, and myself are out for a joyride. <laughs> <laughs>